Hey guys, <clears throat> here you going? Welcome back to a <clears throat> Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel today. It's gonna be a bit of a retrospective rambling video for Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, directed by Zack Snyder, starring Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, and Gal Gadot. The film has just had, as of today and yesterday, its eighth anniversary, which is just insane. I knew the eighth anniversary was looming, but to me, 2016 was like two or three years ago, mate. Now, if I do sound very croaky, I'm very sorry. I'm currently fighting just some sort of like chesticle infection and just coughing up all that lovely good stuff. But also it makes me sound like Heath Ledger's Joker and Bane. It's great. Uh, half. You don't fear death. You welcome it. Your punishment must be more severe. So in this video, I'm just going to be going through the process of what led up to the release of BVS. I'm also going to talk about the film, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. And after eight years, how do I feel about the film? Because my feelings have definitely shifted from 2016 and I will definitely get into that. But I guess the best place to start is at the beginning. 2013 for Man of Steel. With that being said, before I get into things, drop a comment below and let me know if you were in charge of BVS, how would you approach it? How would you tackle it? And what would your vision be for the film if it were to, if it were up to you? So 2013, Man of Steel comes out. I actually liked it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. No, it was not a perfect movie, but I like the dark, grim kind of modern take and realistic take on the Man of Steel. Now, at the end of the film, we get a little Easter egg of a Wayne Enterprises satellite being damaged by Superman and Zod in the final fight in the climax of the film. And I thought, well, that's interesting. That's cool. It's, nothing's probably going to come of that. Cut to a few months later. I'm vacationing in New York and there is an announcement at San Diego Comic-Con 2013 by none other than Zack Snyder and Harry Lennox. And he quotes from The Dark Knight Returns. The only footage that exists is this bootleg shaky cam footage. There is no official footage from the actual event and panel, but I will just play it now. I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. Imagine the energy in that room that just would have been seeping into the walls when that announcement was made. When we see the Superman logo and the Batman logo. So Batman has now been included in the DCEU and introduced, ready to go. But at this point, we did not have a Batman cast. So the hunt was on for who was going to be portraying the Dark Knight in the DCU. Cut to a few months later, the official announcement comes out that Ben Affleck has indeed been cast as the Dark Knight in Zack Snyder's DCEU with Batman v Superman, which kind of acted as Man of Steel too. Now, much to the dismay of a lot of people worldwide, the casting was met with mixed emotions. I, for one, was a bit apprehensive, but I could see where they were coming from in terms of a physicality standpoint. Ben is a big guy and, you know, beef him up a bit, put him in a bat suit. You're looking at like six foot four, six foot five. So I understand the physicality. It's more or less in terms of his acting chops. Can he do a good job of all those personas where you've got your Batman, your personas of Bruce Wayne? Can he manage them all? Can he make them all coherent? And then a few months after that, we got the announcement that Gal Gadot was cast as Wonder Woman and would be briefly appearing in Batman v Superman. Now, I had no idea who Gal Gadot was before this announcement. She was in one of the Fast and the Furious films, I thought. She looks the part, you know, she's got to hit the gym a bit, but I, I figured she looks like a good Wonder Woman. And then filming commenced end of 2013 into 2014. And in 2014, we got our first look at Ben Affleck in his bat suit for Batman v Superman. There had been murmurs about sightings of Affleck in the bat suit. Even at one point, his old pal Kevin Smith mentioned on a podcast somewhere that he has seen photos of Affleck in the suit. And he quoted as saying, very Dark Knight Returns inspired and very Frank Miller. And everyone just lost their shit thinking, this is it. This is the Batman we've wanted to see for the longest time. The comic book pages ripped off and put on screen. And then we finally got it. The day before the release of Batfleck in the suit, we got a first glimpse of the Batmobile in this old abandoned warehouse. And then the next day we got Affleck in the suit standing next to the Batmobile. And it was a glorious day. It just gave me hope that 
This film is going to be incredible. Affleck looked great in the suit. Again, the shorter he is, the, the, the stocky bruiser brawler look. This is Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns Batman, which we have never seen on screen before. And then after that, it was off to the races. Now, I, I want to talk about the hype surrounding BVS, the lead up to the film. I feel I had more enjoyment in the lead up and the hype into BVS before the film came out than the aftermath and actually seeing the film, which sounds kind of sad, but it's true. Case in point, I was two years into my cosplay Chris channel and in 2015, I started the custom collectible series when BVS was gearing up. We had an abundance of action figures, merchandise, including those beautiful big ass Jack specific figures that I did a few custom videos on, which were just so fun to do. Even the little armored Batman figures were great. We also had the release of the Hot Toys line. We saw a preview of them at San Diego Comic-Con. Everything was just happening and it was just BVS everywhere. And then we got the first trailer that premiered online, which was just incredible. Glimpses of Batman, glimpses of what was gonna go down in terms of the fight between Batman and Superman. This is gonna be like an epic cinematic battle of the ages. Then when it came to the second trailer, I feel they gave too much away. We saw Doomsday, which they could have just held off on until the release of the film. We saw Batman about to drop the S-bomb. I actually did a reaction of the trailer wearing a Batman cowl and my nightmare goggles. And that was another thing. We got glimpses of Batman in a trench coat and goggles. I'm thinking this, is this Gotham by Gaslight? Is this a flashback? What the hell is going on? So the hype train at that point from 2015 to 2016 was probably some of the most fun I've had on YouTube. And also I owe a lot of, of my growth on the first channel to Batman v Superman because of all the content based around it, but also just the hype train, just seeing all the clips, the trailers, even though yes, one particular trailer did give a lot away and probably too much away. Just the discourse was absolutely incredible and just thinking this is it. This is gonna be the best comic book film of all time up there with The Dark Knight, The Avengers. But at this point, Marvel already had 12 films under their belt, which I, I feel like with DC, they were trying to play catch up, but I will get into that in a bit. And when it came to me cosplaying, even before the film came out, I wanted to cosplay as Nightmare Batman, as you can see right here. Yeah, the film hadn't even come out yet, but I saw those couple of glimpses and a couple of stills of Affleck in his nightmare suit. And I was just hooked. I was in love with the look, so I wanted to cosplay as him. So again, we were off to the races. Everything was happening. Everything was gearing up. The hype train was real. Obviously, the film got delayed by a year. Originally, it was supposed to come out in 2015, but it got delayed to 2016. Now, upon the film's release, I won tickets to the IMAX premiere here in Sydney through Supernova, which is one of our comic book conventions here in Australia. I was so hyped. I actually had anxiety before going into the film. I wouldn't say bad anxiety, but you know when you just care so much, you are so nervous that you kind of freak the fuck out. Anyway, two and a bit hours later, I watch the film, I go home and I do my review on the Cosplay Chris channel wearing my Batfleck top for my cosplays you can see right here. And I actually gave the film a full five out of five. Check this out. And then the film began. And holy shit. <laughs> The f see, see, this is the problem. I, it's a lot's going on up here at the moment. Like, is the film good? It is brilliant, guys. I honestly think Batman v Superman will be a big game changer for comic book movies to come. It is just a step above all the rest from what I've seen. Nonetheless, you know what I'm gonna give Batman v Superman geeks five geeks out of five. Now, upon leaving the cinema, upon leaving the IMAX theater at Darling Harbour here in Sydney, I equate it to that meme of that dog in the kitchen that's on fire. And he's like, this is fine. I think I was in denial. I wanted to love this film so much that no matter what happened, I was just gonna love it, warts and all. And I think that was the case. I knew that it wasn't a perfect film. I knew that I was let down, but at the same time, I didn't wanna let myself down by feeling shit about it. So I just loved everything about it. And as you can see in that review, that's exactly what I did. But upon reflection, BVS to me is bloated, inconsistent. But with that being said, there are so many good elements and nuggets of potential in this film that I wanna talk about. They're in no particular order, but I'm gonna be talking about the good and the bad. 
and they're just plain ugly. Now, when it comes to the story, I love the idea of Bruce Wayne being there at the events of the reveal of the Superman back in 2013 in Metropolis and trying to help, especially when it comes to the destruction of his building, of Wayne Tower. I love that he just runs straight into the smog, but also just seeing what he has witnessed with Zod and Superman, it gives him that purpose to take down Superman. And you can see the anger in Bruce's face when he sees what Superman and Zod have done to the city, what they have done to the people People, the casualties. I also love the idea of Superman questioning his place on Earth and also people seeing him as this false god and just the simple fact with the snap of his fingers he could wipe out the existence on Earth. When I saw that play out on screen, I thought, okay, that's a good enough reason for Bruce to want to take down Superman. And Superman's like, dude, look, I I'm just going to help no matter what. But then it gets to a point where Superman has pushed enough. He is going to push back, but also push you through a fucking wall and also damage your mech suit in the process. When it comes to the casting of Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, I think it's one of the worst casting choices in history. He actually is one of the biggest reasons why this film was somewhat ruined for me. I do not like his portrayal of Lex whatsoever. He's even gone on recently to state, especially with the casting of Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor in James Gunn's Superman film, someone asked, what advice do you have for Nicholas Holt? He said, don't play it like I did. So he is self-aware of his portrayal of Lex. I get wanting to do something different, but to me, a little neurotic little weasel is not Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Whoa! Ding, 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 ding. I see Lex Luthor as a strong, power-hungry business mogul, and I think Billy Zane could have been so good in this film as Lex. It just makes him a worthy opponent to go up against Batman and Superman, and obviously we see Lex wanting to get Batman and Superman together to fight to bump heads. Now, the film is riddled with a lot of plot holes and a lot of plot points that just go nowhere. Like, you could call this film Batman v Superman Swiss Cheese, but when it comes to the Martha scene, when Batman's about to kill Superman and they find out that they both have a mother named Martha, I think it was one of those things where one person said, No, that's lame. And everyone just kind of jumped on that. But to me, it's kind of sweet and endearing. The fact that Bruce is about to kill this young man that also has a mother, a mother named Martha. He used to have a mother named Martha and Bruce was essentially just gonna be like the mugger that killed his mum and dad when he was a kid. And it's sad at the same time. I honestly don't get the whole Martha hate. Some people just rip on it for the sake of ripping on it. But to me, that was kind of clever. And it just gave Bruce a bit of pause to be like, I have gone too far in this past 20 years. I'm at the point now where I'm so old and jaded, I just don't care anymore. And that's why he then turns and wants to help Clark and also help rescue his mother, which, perfect segue, leads to the warehouse fight. One of the highlights of this film. You ask anyone about BVS, even though they have a massive distaste for the film, they will probably go on to say the warehouse fight was pretty damn cool. It is very reminiscent of the Arkham games and I just think the whole tactical takedowns and how brutal Batman is. Yes, he does throw a crate at a guy's head and probably causes fatal brain damage when you see his brains go up against the brick wall. But at the same time, you gotta understand this is an extremely jaded, grizzled Batman. So he's gotten to the point now, like I said, when he was about to kill Clark, he just does not care anymore. To me, I really like that aspect. It makes sense to me. If this was year three, year two Batman doing this, then that's not on. That just does not make sense to me. But in this case with Affleck's Batman, absolutely. Now, when it came to the whole Doomsday fight and the, and the introduction of Wonder Woman, also glimpses of the Justice League, it was just way too shoehorned in. I would have loved to have had a bit more breathing room with Diana instead of just rocking straight up to save Batman's ass. And mind you, Batman is just like a useless little boy on the ground while Superman and Wonder Woman are fighting Doomsday. And I get it, he's just a man, but he's also the tactful one. He's the smart, he's gotta have the game plan. He obviously does help kill Doomsday with the kryptonite grenade, but at the same time, he just kind of felt a bit wasted by the end. The tease of the Justice League also was cool, but it was just way too lame with how we've got the official logos of all of them when Bruce sends Diana the email. I just figured it could have been done in a much more subtle, tasteful way, if that makes sense. And also you got Arthur Curry there looking awkward and just floating and not knowing what to do like a deer in the headlights. Now, unfortunately, I already had it spoiled for me that Superman does indeed die at the end of the film. It was one of those things where I just accidentally clicked on something, saw the screenshot, and I'm like, well, great, now I know what happens. But unfortunately, it was just all for nothing. We already knew Justice League was filming 
or had already been filmed when BVS came out. There's even footage that was posted recently of a young man who worked on the tactical bat suit. He put up a flashback post about casting up Affleck's tactical cow back in 2015. That's how early on they were filming Justice League. We even saw Henry Cavill training for Justice League, so we knew he was going to be back. It was a bit of a tearjerker for like one second, but at the same time, it was just all for nothing. We knew he'd be back. To me, BVS was just rushed, even though it was delayed. And reason being, and I touched on it before, Marvel was already 12 films ahead by 2016. So I think Warner Brothers were definitely feeling the pressure. We got to get this out here ASAP. We got to get our Avengers film out. But I definitely think it should have been one of those things where they should have had their Affleck solo film, probably Man of Steel 2, and also a Wonder Woman solo film, and then go into Batman v Superman. Maybe at the end of Affleck's solo film, then start at the beginning of BVS with Bruce in Metropolis witnessing the events of Man of Steel. I think that could have been great, but also give Affleck a bit of breathing room to introduce his character, vice versa with Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. But again, I feel like Warner Brothers were like, we got to get this shit out ASAP and they rushed it way too quickly. With that being said, there are so many great elements in this film, but you also have a convoluted story and too many side quests, especially when it comes to Lois Lane, which actually, another perfect segue, the BVS Ultimate Edition. When that was released, it gave a bit of breathing room to the story and gave a bit more context to what was going on, especially when it came to Lois Lane's side quest, especially at the beginning where you see Jimmy Olsen get murdered and everyone get burned and it gives more context that they try to make it look like Superman's heat vision that killed them, essentially framing Superman and giving the world more of a reason why to hate Superman. And not just that, we also see Clark going into Gotham and I like that little exchange he has with the blind man and the blind man's essentially like, look, Batman is ferocious these days. He's angry, he's hunting, there's a new kind of mean in him and I love stuff like that. And apart from that, it's just little extra clips here and there, especially with the nightmare sequence, just a bit of padding here and there, but I feel the film definitely breathe more on a whole. Doesn't make the film perfect at all, but it definitely helps. And then when BVS was said and done, we went into Justice League, or in this case, Justice League, but also Affleck was promised his own solo film with him starring as Batman, producing, writing, and directing. And as we know, that all fell through, and eventually what we got was the Batman starring Robert Pattinson, directed by Matt Reeves. Now, when everything is said and done, guys, is Batman v Superman a perfect film? Is it misunderstood? And has my views on it changed in eight years? Absolutely, my views have changed. No, it's not a perfect film. I, I don't understand when people are always just like, it's just a shit film. I'm like, you got to understand. I think there are just moments and nuggets of greatness so much potential, but it was ultimately let down by just too many cooks in the kitchen, a convoluted story, so many side quests that just, it just didn't really have a conclusion. I get what they were trying to do, but I honestly think Warner Brothers just blew their load way too early with wanting to play catch up to Marvel. You could have just let there be a bit of breathing room with some solo films leading into BBS and then eventually Justice League. But the idea of someone who's just a man using his smarts and strength to go up against essentially a god, that sounds great on paper, not executed well on screen, unfortunately, with a fight that lasts all but five minutes, and then they've wrapped that up. It should have just been called Batman v Superman for a couple of minutes. And what we're left with is definitely a clusterfuck of a film, but fuck it. I love it for that reason. It does become way too ambitious in scope sometimes and just leading to pacing issues and again, a convoluted storyline. The multiple subplots, characters can definitely feel overwhelming and detracting from the central conflict between Batman and Superman, again, with a fight that lasts all but a couple of minutes. And like I touched on before, a little bit down the line, we eventually got the ultimate edition that definitely softened the initial blow of the film's pretty negative reception. But BBS is a film that has sparked countless debates among fans for eight years now. And it's citing their love or hate for it. And to me, that's a pretty good result. Stick with me. How good is it to have a healthy debate with a mate or someone online about a film? It keeps things interesting, even if some people clearly don't know how to handle it. And I owe a lot of my career to the film. I owe a lot to a Batman that resonated with me and started this batshit crazy obsession. Clearly. But 2015 and 2016 was some of the funnest times here on YouTube. And again, I owe a lot of that to BVS. And it's one of those things where I feel like I had more fun with the lead up and the hype to BVS than the actual film itself. 
But again, I still find moments of greatness and little nuggets of potential in that film. And I'm sad we'll never get to see Ben Affleck solo outing as the Dark Knight, but it's like that Dr. Seuss saying, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. I guess at the end of the day, I equate BVS to that one family member that's sometimes not on the straight path in life and they just don't know what they're doing. You still love them, warts and all. Love your guts, and I'll catch you in the next one.